You would not believe how often I see students draw a front view and a top view really big and nice, and then they find out later after those are done when they draw the right side view, they don't have enough room left on the page, and so they just squish it. So this is why the first step to orthographic projection when you're given an isometric view is to draw bounding boxes. You need to measure the width, depth, and height of your isometric drawing and use these XYZ directions to mark out how big your front top and right side view will be and make sure that your drawings will actually fit on the page where you have them located. And if it won't fit, then you can scale it down or expand it outwards or shift it left, right, up, or down so it's going to be generally fills most of the page and it's relatively centered. And so that's what I've got here on the screen. Each of these orange squares is symbolizing a very faint line. Orange meaning that's really light because it might end up getting erased. Its real purpose is for me to just get a general sense of size as to how big my drawings will be and that they'll fit on the page. But now to actually make the engineering drawing, right, your orthographic projections, you'll draw a top view, front view, right view. You can draw them in any order, so just kind of pick whichever one you want. So when all of your surfaces on your drawing are all normal, that is, they're all horizontal and vertical, my recommendation is just gonna be to go from top to bottom, front to back, right to left. Draw all the visible faces first and then the hidden faces afterwards. So my isometric drawing and my orthographic views have the same scale. So the same number of squares on my isometric drawing is the same number of squares on my orthographic views. So to draw this top face that's actually touching the very top surface, I can just measure each length by just counting out all of the squares. So then I can just check kind of each of the gaps on the left side and the right side to see if they also correspond to flat surfaces or if they should be empty, if they were a hole that goes all the way through. So I can see this line on the left that's sort of three squares long does correspond to something about halfway down through the part. So I can go ahead and ink in that section as well. The bottom right corner of the top view, you can see that there's a small square that's actually visible that would be visible from the top. So I can go ahead and darken in that section next. And then all the way down towards the bottom of the part on the right hand side is a kind of big wide flat section that fills in the rest of the top view. Checking for hidden lines, I'm looking for anything that is horizontal, but that would not be visible from the top, that's underneath something else. And in this drawing, there's nothing like that. So we're done, top view done. All right, so let's switch over to the front view next. So again, I'm gonna work front to back. I'll just start off with the shape that's actually touching that front visible surface. And, and again, since my scale is the same, I'm just measuring the length of each little line and just drawing it on my front view. I've got two empty sections now on my front view, one on the left, one on the right. And so first I'll look at that left-hand side. Does that correspond to an actual vertical surface visible from the front view? And it does. You can see that there's a three square tall section that would be visible there. So go ahead and darken in that left side. So I can see that there's two empty squares on my front view and those would would represent an actual visible face. The visible face back there is actually much larger than just these two, but I can start off by darkening in the part of that is visible, just these two blue squares right now. But what that's gonna lead me to next are hidden surfaces. So what surfaces are oriented in a front view direction, that is they're in the YZ plane, but which are not visible because they're blocked behind something else. This red shape would be hidden behind something in front of it, so it's gonna show up as hidden lines. So I'll draw my hidden line, first drawing the L first, kind of right at the corner where the horizontal and vertical hidden lines meet, because hidden lines should meet at a dash, not at the gap between the, the dotted line. Then I'm gonna draw the parts touching the visible lines, because again, dashed lines should start at a visible line, usually. And then just fill in all the, the dashes in between, just to try to make it look generally so that they're all about the same length, where you want the dash longer than the gap. Anything else on the front view that would be hidden? No, no nothing I can see. So front view is done. So right side view, we're just gonna go from right to left, starting off by drawing the flat vertical surface that's actually touching the bounding box. So it's a little bit shorter on the left side and then goes the full height over on the right side. Working my way a little bit more to the left, I can see that there's this little short vertical rectangle all the way on the left side of the right view. And then the whole middle section represents that big flat face kind of right there in the middle of the drawing. And at this point I've basically 
darkened in the entire right side view, the entire area. There's visible faces for the entire right side view. There's no holes that go all the way through. But there are hidden lines necessary since there's this red face all the way on the left side of the part that would be hidden behind other pieces when viewed from the right. So in drawing these hidden lines, I know I want the dash to start right at the edges of the visible line. And I know I want the L, the corner, where the horizontal and vertical lines meet to be an actual solid L. I want the the dashes should connect, not the gaps. And then I'll just fill in the rest of the dashes in between as best I can to make them all about the same length. And if you draw your lines crooked like me, maybe you have to erase them once or twice to straighten them out a little bit. Erase any construction or temporary lines that don't need to be there anymore. And that's it. This is your orthographic projection engineering drawings from the provided isometric view.